the A350-900, an aircraft that will be flying around our skies for decades to come. With hundreds of orders already and more coming, let's take a little bit of a look into it. Today we'll discuss its specifications, the order situation, and what makes it different from its larger family member, the A350-1000. The A350 overall is a twin-engine aircraft, specifically aimed at doing long-range flights. If you were to purchase yourself an A350-900, it would cost you some US $317.4 million. So far from cheap. But as we know, airlines can usually get discounts on these list prices, sometimes more than others. This A350-900 was the launch aircraft and is the first A350 model. The aircraft typically seats 325 passengers, but similar to the list prices, this can also differ as multiple airlines may opt for different configurations to better suit their needs. The range of the A350-900 sits around 15,001 kilometers. Yep, I know, it's an odd number and it's a pretty weird choice. When it comes to competing and replacing aircraft, this A350-900 is pitched at competing with the Boeing 777 and Boeing 787. You could argue that it could be one or the other, with the A350 and 787 coming out around the same time and almost offering the same capabilities, but you could also say the 777 is the perfect competition for the aircraft as well. This aircraft will or is replacing the A340 family, specifically the A340-300 and the A340-500, which for me is quite sad as I really did love the A340 aircraft. Now the Dash 900 version, there's a few new features to it and also some similar ones taken from other Airbus aircraft. We'll begin with probably the most notable difference, those raccoon-like windows at the front of the airplane. To me, they look fantastic, but I know a lot of people are still reserved on them. Either way, it was a hit, and now we're seeing some airlines actually adopt the raccoon-like style or mask, if you want to call it that, on their own new liveries. For example, Air Canada. The A350 has a brand new fuselage, which is also unlike previous aircraft, along with a new redefined undercarriage. All this helps make the A350 so efficient and an attractive option for airlines out there. I mentioned very early on, the A350-900 had a larger family member, which was the A350-1000. Now, there have actually been speculated variants that would be based off the Dash 900, which were planning on being released, but unfortunately none of these came through. I'll be likely making a video on each of these at some stage as well, so stay tuned for that. On to the orders. In terms of orders, the A350-900 has been relatively successful with around 677 orders. It's delivered at this stage some 145 airplanes, but I believe by the time this video goes out, possibly a few more on top of that. Qatar Airways were the launch customer for the aircraft, and since 2014, when it was first delivered, um, the deliveries have certainly been steady with 14 in 2015, 49 in 2016, and 78 in 2017. On top of this, the orders for the aircraft have gradually been slowing down, but really the most successful years for this aircraft were 2007, 2008, and 2013. What makes the A350-900 so interesting is the variety of airlines from around the globe that have ordered it. For example, Hong Kong Airlines, LATAM, Lufthansa, Thai Airways, and Air Mauritius. The global coverage for this aircraft is immense, and for a manufacturer like Airbus, this is exactly what they would have wanted. Thanks for taking a look at my review on the A350-900. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on this aircraft in the comments section below, except the few that despise Airbus that I know probably haven't lasted this long to the video. If you are not an Airbus fan and you have made it this far, maybe you could comment Saab is the superior aircraft manufacturer. Anyway, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace. Oh, well,